Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the Footy with Fletch podcast. I'm your host, Fletch Fraser, and today I'm very lucky to be joined by Alistair Lynch, who is a three-time premiership player, and he also played a total of 306 games with Fitzroy, the Brisbane Bears, and the Brisbane Lions. Thank you for joining me today, Alistair. How are you? G'day, Fletch. Yeah, no, absolute pleasure to be on your show. Um, so looking forward to chatting, but um, I do see that Carlton flag behind you there. So you're obviously a loyal Carlton man. So good to see and and good to see that they're on the rise again. It is good to see and it's going to be great to talk to you. You're, of course, a big footballing, I guess, royalty within Australian football. You've won the three flags. How did your football journey sort of begin? Um, I suppose like a a lot of young Australians um, love playing all sorts of sport as a, as a kid and probably played mostly footy and cricket. And, um, yeah, you always have dreams of playing at the higher level. And I suppose growing up in, in Tassie, where I grew up, in a small um, town of, uh, I think, about four or 5,000 people, a town called Wynyard, um, I think my, um, my aim was hopefully to, play in the senior team there at Wynyard, um, which ironically I never got the opportunity to do. But, yeah, I think that was what I wanted to do and everyone sort of loved going and watching the footy on a Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, just having fun with my mates and, and playing footy back in Tassie was uh, how it all started. Now, obviously, at the moment, there are discussions about a Tasmanian AFL team. You must be pretty excited about it, given that you were also included into the Tasmanian team of the century. What are your thoughts on a Tassie team? Yeah, I think um, Tassie um, deserves a team and they've been, um, well, Tasmanians are passionate followers of um, AFL footy in, in general. And um, it's been a massive contributor to the history of um, AFL football all around the country, not just those that have stayed home in Tassie, but the, You'll get the contribution to the AFL team of the century and so many great players that uh, were picked in that side. Um, there's a number of them from Tassie. And I think um, over most generations, uh, Tasmania's contributed enormously to the game. And, and I think um, as long as the business case stacks up, I mean, it's got to do that. But I think I think uh, Tassie can uh, present a, a business case that will allow them to thrive in the AFL. And I think... Um, in the coming weeks, next couple of weeks, hopefully uh, Tasmania will be granted a licence. And, um, yeah, I think that'll be exciting for for all AFL followers. I think um, members of almost every other club, uh, although they're going to obviously support their club, like you with um, with Carlton, but I think a, a lot of people would like to see a Tasmanian team in. So, yeah, it'll be an exciting or probably a nerve-wracking next couple of weeks, uh, then an exciting build-up to the first game that Tassie plays, hopefully. Now, you played 120 games of footy for Fitzroy for seven years between 1986 and 1993. What was the difference between your time at Fitzroy and then the Brisbane Bears and the Brisbane Lions? Yeah, well, that, um, as you said, I was I was drafted in 86. So it was, I think it was about October or November of 86. Now, actually, I didn't go over for that next year of 1987. I stayed at home and, and played um, footy in Tassie with, the Hobart Football Club, and then went over for the '88 season, and and had a great time playing with um, with Fitzroy and and some uh, lifelong mates um, are still from those days. Um, there's a, there's a heap of players that I keep in touch with, and um, yeah, we often talk about the good old days and reflect on those great experiences playing with Fitzroy. Um, it was at a time though when. Um, I suppose the VFL and AFL were looking at ex expansion and they were looking to consolidate the teams in Melbourne. So, you know, it's reasonable to say that, you know, the AFL wasn't giving Fitzroy too many favours. Um, and so when I made the move to um, to Brisbane uh, on that uh, long-term contract, you did see a difference um, because the AFL obviously was heavily invested into the expansion clubs and Brisbane being one of those and they wanted to make sure that they um, were successful or had every opportunity to be successful. So yeah, it was a, um, it was a vastly different, um, uh, differently resourced club that I saw. So um, yeah, great, great experience at both clubs. And as I said, 
lifelong friends from the Fitzroy days, as with Brisbane, but it probably was built on the back of um, a bit of adversity down there as we're trying to um, keep the club together. But, yeah, got some great mates and, and certainly love my time at Fitzroy. You're very lucky to play over 300 games of footy. What would be some of your memorable moments throughout your career? I think, well, your first game, my, my first game was for Fitzroy at what they used to call the Western Oval, which is now the, the Witten Oval, and we are playing against Footscray or the Western Bulldogs. And I think it was about round two or three of that 1988 season. And, um, yeah, got the opportunity to play. And I, I lived at the time with uh, Michael Gale, Darren Kapler and Matthew Armstrong. And they'd played the first game or two in the seniors. I'd been in the twos. So managed to play well enough uh, and got up into the, um, the seniors for my first game. And that was a great thrill. That was a, one of the biggest thrills that I can remember. Um, and probably the chronology of it all was my first game was a great thrill. I was fortunate enough to play with Tassie when we defeated Victoria, which I think was 1990 um, at North Hobart Oval. That was another one. And then some standouts, obviously, and and probably my fondest um, memory was, or the fondest memory of a game was the 2001 Grand Final when we were very lucky to win the first of um, three premierships. So, yeah, the, there's there's numerous games, numerous moments, um, new, numerous uh, very good um, experiences. But, yeah, th- those probably three are the ones that stand out for me. Now, a listener wants to know who would be some of your favourite teammates to play with during your journey? Favourite teammates? I think, well, the the guys I live with, um, because we sort of arrived at similar sort of times, Michael Gale, Matthew Armstrong, Darren Kapler, um, they they were great. We'd all come from interstate with Caps coming from South Australia and... um, and Maddie and Michael coming from Tassie. Um, so that they've always been good mates and, and probably like um, a lot of um, people that have um, had mates through footy. Unfortunately, we, we don't catch up as much as we'd probably like to, but, um, yeah, we touch base on a semi-regular basis and uh, that's always good. And then, I mean, you can go through so many um, people. You know, Paul Ruse, um John Blakey, uh, Paul Broderick, there's a heap of players from Fitzroy. And then I was fortunate enough just a couple of days ago to catch up with some premiership teammates or we had a premiership reunion for the 2002 20th uh, anniversary of of that premiership. And um, the reunion was for everyone that participated or was on the list in in 01, 02 and 03. Um, partners, uh, staff, coaches, and um, to catch up with those guys uh, for about eight hours over a few quiet beers was um, reinforced how many great friends that I've been able to um, to have uh, and m- great people that I've been able to meet. And there was plenty of laughs there. But, yeah, you could, you could name pretty much the whole team or the whole team. So, uh, yeah, that was great. And that was probably the freshest one in my mind. But uh, meeting with those premiership teammates was fantastic. You're lucky to play with so many fantastic teammates. And it's funny you mentioned Paul Rees because that question actually came from him. So it's uh, great <laughs> to have the great man sending through a question for you. What were some of your emotions when the Fitzroy merge occurred? Yeah, that was, that was a really difficult period. It was, it was a difficult period, and you mentioned Rosie. It was difficult um, for a lot of us um, that had started our careers at Fitzroy and had gone through a tough few situations. Um, many people mightn't remember that we actually, there was a merger between Footscray and the Fitzroy Football Club, I think it was the end of 89. And um, then it was sort of demerged or didn't go through with it. And um, that made it hard again. Um, so a f- few of us had left uh, before the end of Fitzroy. And although sort of Fitzroy, when it finished in its own right, sort of merged with the um, the Brisbane Bears to become the Brisbane Lions and, and essentially that I was reunited with my old club, that was, um, that was still a really d- difficult period because you wanted Fitzroy to stay um as a club in its own right i actually felt if it was going to merge 
the Brisbane merger was um, probably the best option, whereas the um, the history of the Brisbane Lions Football Club is 100 plus years of the Fitzroy Football Club and 10 years of the Brisbane Bears. And I think so that that history is always going to be retained and, and you know, well and truly respected. Um, so, yeah, it was a difficult period. So it was a very sad day um, and sad period when that the club uh, ceased to exist in its own right. But um, a lot of us in the, in the Brisbane Lions are, are very proud of the history um, and both clubs that uh, merged together and um, and really want to make sure that those memories, that history um is retained and uh, is acknowledged. And and part of that is um, acknowledging some of the past players and past greats. And it was great once again to catch up with Kevin Murray, the uh, iconic Brownlow medalist from the Fitzroy Football Club. He was actually there as part of our reunion on Sunday as well in, in Fitzroy. So we had a pub in Fitzroy where we gathered and it was great to see him. But, yeah, a very, very difficult time for, um, for so many people and especially sort of us players that had sort of played with Fitzroy and had moved on. What was sort of, I guess, the reasoning for you to stay on at the Brisbane Lions after the merge had occurred? Oh, well, I was sort of, um, I'd gone to the Brisbane Bears. I think I was there for about three years before the merger happened. And I'd gone through some health issues and and just got myself back to um, playing really and playing at an okay level. I sort of, it was taking a fair while to get back to uh, anywhere near my best, but um, either club and players and supporters uh, in general were very supportive of me to help me um, get back, even though it wasn't probably given the uh, on-field output they would have expected. But um, yeah, so but yeah, I was always going to stay. I wasn't going to move on to anywhere else, but um, yeah, it was great to go through those difficult periods, uh, those difficult times and pop out the other end with so many superstars and experience those premierships. You mentioned those premierships and all the superstars that you played with. You captained the club from 1997 to 2000 alongside Michael Voss. What was it like to captain the Brisbane Lions during what was uh, probably time before the success really started? Yeah, it was a, it was a difficult time um, and it was, Probably the merger, we probably didn't handle the merger as well as we might have. I think um, basically I think it was the best eight players from Fitzroy were just plonked in uh, with the Brisbane Bears players. Um, but there should have been a lot more work and time spent to the, the integration of the players. And so it was a difficult time uh, over the next couple of years. And, um, yeah, we, we needed the change. We had a change of leadership. Um, with Lee Matthews coming into the club and um, yeah he set us on the right path to um, make sure that all the players understood what the new club meant where you sat in the club and clearly defined roles and um, yeah, things turned around there but um, I was given the captaincy and when Lee joined the club in 99 I actually uh, I volunteered to stand down because I still wasn't doing all the training and I can assure you, if you're sitting on the sidelines for a lot of the really hard training sessions, that's that's a bit tough. Although the guys are probably doing it tougher out in the field, so I I felt like I wanted to stand down. Uh, Lee wouldn't accept that, and uh, I pushed again the next year. I finally got him to uh, understand my motivations to actually stand down. It wasn't going to cha- change me as a leader as such, but we had a young star, Michael Voss, and I thought it was um, it was his uh, team to lead by himself. So um, yeah, he took over and continued to take the club up and and see those premiership years. You've played with some great players, like we mentioned before, and you've had a number of fantastic coaches. What was your relationship with Lee Matthews like during your time at the Brisbane Lions? Well, it started, um, I think uh, a lot of us, when we saw Lee Matthews walk through the door, we're in awe of him and, and idolised him as a um, as a great player and uh, and obviously he'd, he'd done a lot at the Collingwood Footy Club and he'd spent a couple of years in the media so but he's an icon of the game and so once he you know arrived in Queensland um, it gave us a lot of credibility and gave us a lot of hope as well he united the group that was fractured at the time and um, and that's not just fractured um not saying on just on field or anything like that the club was fracturing off field as well and so he united the group and um yeah it was it was great i used to love 
and I think modern sport, you have a lot of meetings all the time. But I used to always love the um, Lee Matthews meetings. He, he was great at making the most complicated sound simple and he was great at uniting the group and he was great at empowering individuals to do jobs. And so, yeah, no, Lee Matthews, um, he was you know, pretty intense as as far as coaching is concerned. He's, he sort of wasn't one to um, just joke and or laugh at different times. But, um, yeah, even Sunday... Uh, we saw him uh, doing an interview up the front, and um, he was uh, he was cracking jokes, and he's very uh, more very much more a relaxed man now. But um, now Lee Matthews was a super leader, um, super coach. Obviously, he was a super player as well. But um, I think Lee sometimes understates his value. I mean, he just sort of says, you know, he'd wind us up, send us to the race, and way we'd go. But no, he he united the group both on and off the field, and he gave us so much direction and belief. And, um, yeah, I think a lot of our success goes uh, to Lee Matthews. You're very lucky to be able to be coached by Lee Matthews. He's a champion of the game, as you are as well. You were the player who had possession of the ball in the 2001 Premiership when the final siren sounded, and it was the 57-year Premiership drought for the Lions had finally been dropped, broken. What was that moment like for you in the history of the Brisbane Lions, but in your career as well? Yeah, as, as we touched on earlier, that's the number one sporting moment that I've ever experienced. Um, and I think we'd been on a 16 game winning streak. And so, you know, things were going pretty well, but you didn't really have time to reflect or think about what you're doing as far as the enormity of our winning streak or the um, where we were on the ladder and the possibilities because, again, what Lee was so good at, it was getting us to be in the moment and thinking about what can I do next and, and what am I actually needing to do right now? So we lived in that moment and it was almost like that final siren was – it was almost a bit of a – it felt like a bit of a – surprise like you weren't conscious that oh no the game's over here we're gonna win this by whatever we won it by but the siren went you're going oh shit we've won and then that that instant was a, a surge of adrenaline through your body which wasn't a conscious thought but it was like um it was why it was so special because of what the club had been through the ups and downs um you know you touched on before broke a drought since 1944 was the last Fitzroy premiership it was the first premiership for the the new entity the Brisbane Lions and the individuals like us all had had um a heap of ups and downs to get us to that moment and so like you know, I had my ups and downs off, on the field and off the field and Everyone did. So that final siren to have the ball in the hand, it was it was like a, a signal that, yeah, we've made it. And we um, got to celebrate those um, those moments. And you still do celebrate, really. I mean, it's not something that you consciously think about, you know, how good were we or anything like that. But um, what Lee used to always say to us, he said, with team success, the individual get rewarded as a byproduct. And... I can honestly say that us individuals are still getting rewarded. So we still have moments where, whether it's, you know, um, opportunities to coach in the AFL like so many of my ex-teammates are and have over the last 20 years, or whether it's in business or whether it's, you know, doing things like this, we're still getting rewarded because we get to talk to you, Fletch, about great times. And if we hadn't have been in those great teams, I'm tipping you probably wouldn't give me a call. So as Lee always said, um, we the individual is getting rewarded and we continue to. You're very lucky to be part of such a successful club. And you mentioned that a number of your ex-teammates went on to become coaches. Did you ever see those players go on and become coaches when you were at the club? And did you think that they would? Yeah, I think um, just looking at the quality, and I think I wrote a newspaper article during our um, successful period and I listed um, some of the players. And I can't remember exactly, but I, I'll guess that the players that are doing it were amongst that list um, because you, you, saw, you saw the quality of people that they are and um, it wasn't just about their footy smarts or, or 
or just one or the ability as a player um it was the quality of person the fact that um you know so many of, of our teammates of the time I had genuine interest in who you were as a as a human and not just as a footballer and so many of them communicate so well so it wasn't a great surprise um but I must admit sort of even on the weekend there is a sense of pride that I know and got to play with Nigel Lappin and Chris Scott who were down there at um at the John Football Club and I think that's what I love now I mean I still feel I am definitely a, a Brisbane Lions supporter, but whether I'm watching Craig McRae coach at uh, Collingwood or Vossi coach at Geelong, it's hard not to get drawn to actually want to see them do well and actually almost as bad as it sounds, barrack for Collingwood and Carlton at times. And uh, and certainly I've done that over the last uh, few years with the Geelong Football Club as well. Did you ever want to get into coaching yourself after your playing career had sort of finished? No, I so I was finished at 36 and we didn't train that hard, I must say, but we trained pretty much every day. So I was just worn out from um, the whole football uh, environment and, and the time we were spending at the club. And and what we do know that assistant coaches, and probably even more so now, they work incredibly long hours, and as do the senior coaches, but they work incredibly long hours. And so at the time... I just, uh, I wasn't interested. I wanted a break. I wanted to try to do something uh, outside of footy, um, which I've gone on and, and done. And ironically, the um, I think it was the week after my career finished in 2004, after we lost the premiership to, um, lost the grand final to Port Adelaide, I did get a call from Mark Williams, Choco Williams, the Port Adelaide coach, and he did offer me um, a coaching role for the 2005 season. Uh, with with Port Adelaide, which at the start with, I was worried it was Rusey playing a joke on me. Um, so I was a bit sceptical that it was actually Choco to start with, but then I realised it was. So I had an offer. I had an opportunity to also stay around at Brisbane if I if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I, ju- I just wanted a break and wanted to start um, something different. You know, probably in, in recent years, I've, not that I could go back coaching now, I don't think, because the game changes so quick, but... Um, Getting back into the emotional ups and downs of wins and losses in a club land is attractive again because yeah, it's something you did for so long. And um, but yeah, no, for um, for a lot of time, yeah, I didn't think assistant coaching was for me. I just wanted to wanted to spell, do something different. And outside of footy, what are some of your interests? Because like you've mentioned, so much of your life has been in and around footy. So what do you sort of do to get a break from your media commitments with Fox and even when you were playing? My major business interests now, I have a um, health and wellbeing company called Healthy Business. We work on mainly industrial sites all around Australia and New Zealand and PNG. You know, we started in mining and uh, it's to really help those mostly blue collar workers um, out on remote sites to physically and mentally look after themselves. So it's not so much the old school mentality of don't talk about your sore bits and push through the pain barrier and when your break will fix you or replace you. It's about helping people, good people that are working to generate incomes, to generate time off, to do the stuff they want to do. We're out there on sites now helping them get through their working life safely, but more importantly, actually get to their their weekends, their holidays, or the end of their working life physically and mentally capable of doing the stuff they want to do and the stuff they've always worked for. So I'm passionate about that. I, I love what I do. So that's that's great to get, although at times you get recognised as a ex-footballer, it's, um, that's something I'm, I'm passionate about and, and enjoy getting out to those sites and doing. So I, I do that for work. I'm uh, a director of a leadership uh, business as well. And I must say that, like, what I do in business, um, I'm drawing on all the lessons that we learnt from from football. So I draw a lot on Lee Matthews' leadership style. I draw on my battle with illness and what we did at um, at the more the point Brisbane Lions, where it was about understanding what nutrition you needed, what um, activity you needed, hydration, how to make sure that you looked after those around you with mental health 
health um, issues as well. So, yeah, I'm still drawing on um, a lot of my experiences from footy, although I'm sort of outside of the footy arena. You've got a great career outside of footy and you're a great person, Lynchy. So thanks very much for joining me today on the Footy with Fletch podcast. It was great to talk to you. No worries, Fletch. Uh, absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, congratulations on the show. And um, yeah, I hope those blues and bossy can look after you in the coming years and you can see some success like we've seen on the weekend with Juwan. Thank you very much, Alistair Lynch, joining me on the Footy with Fletch podcast today. Goodbye for now.